check this out. This is a Malayan pit viper, which is Cholesthelasma rotostoma. Now these guys are extremely dangerous, extremely volatile because they are terrestrial vipers and ambush predators. So she can strike quite far for her length and she has very, very long fangs. She has a powerful hemotoxin, which would quite literally rot my flesh off of my bones if she were to bite me. Now these guys are mainly preying on rodents, birds, uh, frogs, and lizards. Uh, so they're gonna sit in piles of leaves with that really, really cryptic um, sort of pattern on the top, helps them blend in. But they are really, really cool. You can come a little closer and get some cool close-up shots of her. I'll let you know if you're getting too close. But look at that snake. Gorgeous, gorgeous snake. This is just a juvenile, a little one. Let's see if we can see that brightly colored tail. So if you take a look at that tail at the very end, it's a little lighter colored than the rest of the body. They actually will wiggle that tail around to attract uh, frogs and small animals into coming closer so that they are in reach. Look at that tongue flicking out. She's just trying to figure out what's going on. This is actually our first terrestrial viper we have found this trip. Which is very nice because we drove about an hour and a half to get out to this spot to look specifically for these and for some other species of snakes as well. Look at that beautiful snake. Really, really pretty. Now a bite from one of these guys is probably not going to kill you, but it will definitely uh, cause a lot of tissue damage, a lot of nerve damage. It's very common to lose fingers, toes, uh, sometimes even whole limbs uh, to highly hemotoxic bites. Hi, you're cute. You're cute. Very, very pretty snakes. As you can see on the sides of the head there, uh, the heat sensing pits uh, that they actually are using to uh, hunt prey in a thermal uh, sense. So like all snakes, uh, these little gals are equipped with a forked tongue. And this aids in locating their food because as the tongue flips out, particles will land on uh, both ends and whichever part, whichever end, excuse me, has the most particles on it um, of the organism, they know that it's slightly in that direction and they can actually figure out which direction their prey item is and actually follow it. So if this animal were to bite a rodent per se, maybe it's a little big, maybe it's a little... Um, a little more equipped to survive the hemotoxin for a few seconds and it hops and runs and darts off uh, in another direction, this little creature here can actually track it uh, better than uh, pretty much any other animal on the planet, like a hound dog, <laughs> pretty much tracking because they have a very, very advanced olfactory system. So when they pull that tongue back in the mouth and they push the tongue up to the roof of the mouth, the brain reads all that information tells the snake exactly where to go. Really, really cool snake. You can see some of that dorsal pattern there. Looks very much like dry leaves. Very much like dry leaves. So it is the, the perfect camouflage for an animal that regularly sits by logs uh, or in large patches of, uh, of leaves in ambush, waiting for prey to come by. Very, very cool snakes. Really, really cool. I was really hoping we would see one tonight. It's almost so cool, you just want to cup it in your hand. But if she were to bite me, I'd probably spend the rest of my trip in the hospital, and I might get a hook for a hand, because my hand might just rot off. Which would be less than ideal. <laughs> I'd rather keep both of my hands and this snake at the end of a hook. Very, very pretty snake. Well, I don't want to stress her out too much, uh, so we're gonna put her back where we found her, let her on her way, and hopefully she snags a frog or a little mouse or something tonight. Bye.
Should I go faster? Up the shutter speed and you might get your tongue shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this one is fast. Good job, move. Alright. Alright, you filming? Yeah. Alright, there's a huge toke on the side of this house. And I'm going to try to catch it without it biting the crap out of me. Okay, see if you can come a little closer. Alright, he's seen me. Trying to figure out what's going on. Really pretty geckos for sure. Alright, you can see how big his head is. All of that is chomping muscle. That's his masseter. Oh, 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 grab it, grab it. Oh! He got away. He's up there. He is too high. I'm sorry, Jack's World of Wildlife fans. You failed us. I failed. All right, so check out this little toke gecko. I saw some eyes shine from down on a trail, which I was heading back to my little house because there's a freaking gnat in my eye and I'm dying. But I think I can try and catch this toke. Okay. I think I just might be able to catch him. So let's see here. Ooh, make sure it's in focus. There we go. Yep, got him. Come here. Oh, he's pooping on me. Look at that. Toke gecko. Pretty decent sized one. See, he's trying to get me to grab that tail because, just like a lot of species of geckos, that tail can detach, allowing the toke, woo, woo, easy there, to get away. And also take a look at the coloration inside the mouth. That can also be used to tell predators to back off. Very, very cool. Oh, got some poop on my fingernail there. Delish. Hey, easy, easy. I'll let you go in a second. I'm just telling, just teaching people in the, of the world about you. Very cool. All right, whoop. Don't want him to bite me. There he is. Gecko pride and all. Look, you can go now. There he goes. Back to looking for bugs or whatever he was doing before. And now, I've got poop all over me. Gross. Freaking tokes, man. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. So check out what we just found. This is a species of Asian pitcher plant. These guys are in the genus Nepenthes, and as you can see, they are full, oops, oops. They are full of, let's see if you can see in there. Ugh. Full of liquid <laughs> that actually attracts and drowns and partially digests insects. That is super cool. We may see more of these in Borneo, some much larger species inhabit that area. They're right here, right next to this little stream, which is ideal because carnivorous plants prefer a lot of water and light, but do not require a lot of soil nutrients. So oftentimes they'll inhabit some pretty swampy areas in order to get that minimum water content um, and a lot of light. So they actually are supplementing their poor soil with nutrients they get from insects and in some cases um, larger vertebrate ma animals or even poop from certain species of tree shrews. Very, very cool. So at the end of the leaf, there's a long little stem and at the end, a baby pitcher which will swell up and grow to the size of this one right here. 
very, very cool. Very awesome plants for sure. Let's see. Even some little spikes up there under the cap as well. Very pretty. <laughs> Check out this little guy. This is little viper number two. Really, really pretty. Little guy. There he goes. Gage.